place where souls may mend your ailing mind. Once branded, the symbol of the curse, an augur of darkness. Hello fellow gaming enthused viewers to another head-to-head -head and technical analysis from software have been busy the last few months and this week. Fresh from my analysis of Bloodborne last week, now we get some multi-platform action in the form of last year's release Dark Souls 2. Having launched on last gen machines and PC, it was another example of delivering to the masses, with the console being the main aim for the game, it's where its roots are, the entire series being a console RPG. The game was a solid but controversial release, with its lighting engine severely pared back from the initial showings. Even the PC had the exact same engine as consoles. Roll on 12 months or so, and now we have a newer, updated version for PS4, Xbox One and PC. If you want to upgrade the last DX9 based game with some new DX11 features from the update here. First thoughts on this are quick and simple. It is not worth it, as the game, art, design and play are identical. Instead, this new version offers up some welcome but purely light visual improvements. The game already had a nice doff effect for foreground objects that adds a nice sense of depth to the camera in the game. Motion blur is added to the camera and enhanced over its original release, along with characters in the game as you move. But the lighting engine has also been updated, with a much broader range of light and dark, something that is key to the game's atmosphere, with it creating such a foreboding sense of anguish from the outset. This is contrasted by the sun-drenched open hub area that is juxtaposed with the majority of the game elsewhere. Here some screen space crepuscular rays are used to enhance the light with it occluding from the casts and hit nearby objects or yourself. With these small improvements but welcome additions are evident throughout the game and all add a fair degree of visual improvement to the last release along with a more computational load. But this is not the biggest change, well on console anyway, as this version sports not only a fully native 1920x1080 resolution on both PS4 and Xbox One, but it also runs the game at over twice the frame rate from last gen, with the glorious and single most important aspect of games now, if you listen to some, 60fps. Now this improvement is very welcome and is always the preferred option for frame rate on any game, but should never come at the expense of other things or become the only goal to aim for or purchase decision. With the game's assets and environments all not being overtly taxing even with the DX11 feature improvements, the target for 60fps is a valid one and certainly does not come at the expense of the visuals or gameplay. But with the improvements to post-process effects that they have also, it seems, increased the amount of enemies which adds an even greater level of resource use but also makes the game even tougher, a challenge it was never accused of needing to address. I do not normally include gameplay sections in my technical analysis or head-to-heads, but as this is a remaster I will here, as the effort for two videos is not needed. After coming back into this straight on the back of Bloodborne, the first highlight is that the visuals in Dark Souls certainly show its age and roots far more. Where Bloodborne has far more detailed geometry, character models, texture work and lighting model, it also has sound design, animation and a physics engine that is also vastly superior to what is on offer here, albeit at half the frame rate. This shows the sacrifices of frame rate, but more so in this example, the gigantic changes you can get from the same engine when the target spec and aim are set from day one. Upporting the Dark Souls 2 engine was a question of programming more than anything else. But this is not to say that Dark Souls 2 is a bad looking game, as it does have some very nice benefits, in addition to its frame rate. Textures are of a very high quality, much higher than seen in the recent DMC remaster, which also sported on PS4 at least, terrible texture filtering. An issue Dark Souls on both does not suffer from, with most machines sporting a full 16 times an isotropic filtering which makes textures all appear clean and crisp from all angles. This helps show the good mix of texture and normal maps that add shadows from the light sources in the game which you get from everywhere. It also shows where POM and tessellation when used well as in Bloodborne improve the look and depth of each rugged wall or sunken flooring. But these are far too big a change to redo assets and engine work to this level. But I'm sure the next Souls game will bring these improvements from Bloodborne and they will be a welcome addition as they add so much more immersion in the game. But this is a problem that will not be an issue here as Dark Souls is immersive and damn right unforgiving, but this is not news to most. The appreciation for Bloodborne, and I absolutely love the game, has even increased since playing these remasters, as the double frame rate never adds much more fluidity to the controls than it should. 
As the game is fully V-synced on both, I imagine the input polling from Bloodborne is running at the same rate at Dark Souls here, at 16 milliseconds, meaning the flow of combat can actually feel slightly better or worse, dependent on your chosen path. This segmentation of engine work is a much bigger deal than the single output metric, and playing these games side by side, as much as Dark Souls is a superb game, Bloodborne is the more refined, polished and complete game, both visually, audio and production wise, all based on the same formula. Repetitive sound bites are used for footsteps, brushing through grass or even climbing ladders, sound design issues here that are not present in Bloodborne. And this feeling of refinement in presentation applies to the entire package, with the world and style all being of a much higher calibre as you would expect of the newer game. And if this all sounds like a negative attack on Dark Souls 2, it is not my aim, but simply to show how stark a game and engine can change from one aim, team or design. But enough about Bloodborne, this is Dark Souls 2, and aside finding campfires, dodging attacks and dying a lot, what are the platform differences? Well, like I say, resolution, texture work, post-processing effects and target frame rate are all in equal standing on both, along with the FXAA solution used to clean up the image. The single biggest win aside frame rate over Bloodborne, with its heavy shader work going mostly untouched in Bloodborne, but here the game is very clean and mostly avoids any large aliasing issues that offend, helped in part by its dull colour palette and angular design. But a difference does come, and it is of no surprise that the refresh rate varies on both machines from its 60 aim, but one suffers far more than the other. Throughout real-time cutscenes or the quieter areas as you explore, both machines manage a locked 60, aside oddly the PS4 that can drop a single frame when entering new areas or here and there as a scene changes in the cutscene. This is the only real and odd blip that is of no concern, but at the tower hub you can get the PS4 to drop a frame or two when looking at the house and rocks at the back. This is a strange issue, and one the Xbox One does not suffer from, as it flows through the scene without any hiccup. But this is, as I say, a minor issue and something I'm sure is a simple code issue and not a real factor of conversion. Though early lighter scenes the game runs solid 60 on both with no concern, but once we get to more open areas the X1 can start to fall behind. Here with my updated and I am still working on more improvements for the information, you can see not only the actual frame rate achieved in real time, but also the real time mean frame rate for both as it's built throughout the scene. Here on PS4, we can see the average never drops from the 59, which is for all intents and purposes a fully locked 60 game. The X1 is not bad here, but does dip down to a low point of 52, with the PS4 some 6 FPS higher. This brings the average on X1 down to 56, which again is of no concern, and aside this in-depth analysis you would not notice. But further on this gets worse, and once you hit some large areas or outdoors with multiple enemies, the PS4 can dip a little more into the low 50s, which still leaves the average at a solid 58. But the Xbox One can dip a further 15 frames and far more prolonged runs, meaning here you can feel the choppiness that comes with the lowest marker of 41, bringing the average down to 54. Again, this is not a huge issue, but is a clear prize for the need to reach the same resolution and effects parity as the Sony machine with lots of overdraw from heavy alpha effects, just like from my DMC video which allowed the X1 to tear when this happened, helping the frame rate slightly at the cost of screen stability. Here with V-Sync on both active, the higher ROP count from the PS4, more than anything else, is the culprit for the difference from both machines. The CPU is still most likely the biggest issue for game drops at this point in the generation, with far more specific practices and coding changes that to come that will improve this further. Check out my Naughty Dog video up over the weekend to learn more about this in practice from a first party team. These kind of lessons will also work to a lesser degree within third party. To be clear, 60 will still be more of an exception this generation rather than the rule, but we are currently in a run of quite a few games, both now gen and last, that are aiming and mostly achieving this very difficult task admirably. Overall from the comparisons you see, the lowest average frame rate is 54 to 53 on the Xbox One, with the PS4 coming in at 57 to 56, a couple of average frame rate higher. But the biggest difference is the consistency of the drops. They do drop down to similar low levels of mid 40s on both machines, but it's much shorter and in much less occasions on the PS4. With all that said, if you have both machines, then the PS4 is a preferred option, with identical visuals improved by the higher and thus far more consistent performance. But if you have the choice of the PS4, I would still pick Bloodborne over Dark Souls 2. The Xbox One does very well and with the most likely marketing driven push for resolution parity has come at the expense of a small but noticeable hit on the frame rate that at times can be felt as you play, but the overall game experience and visual presentation is unaffected. 
if you have a mid-level PC and the game, then buying this again on that or either console is just not worth the extra investment over the welcome but superfluous visual improvements. I will leave you with a few more minutes of footage to see you out. And as always, if you like this or any of my other content, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me immensely and I appreciate each and every one of you that does. You guys and girls take care and I'll see you soon on the next one.